there's no blueprint on how to beat me. We got an ad for Joe Lewis had come out of retirement to fight Rocky Marciano. The man was 76 years old. Your biggest payday is facing me. Without me, you're not getting shit. One day on, one to go. Who the fuck is that guy? Allow me to demonstrate the skill of Shao Rain. The special technique of shadow boxing. All right, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Money Mark coming at you with another edition of Two to the Body Podcast. What's good? What's up, what's up? I'm your boy Money Mark, and I got my other homeboy right here, One Way Renzo. What you got to say? I mean, I, I ain't got to say nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, y'all know I beat that boy. <laughs> yeah, I know I beat that boy. You know what I'm saying? Ah, I'm just, okay. I'm you know, saying. it sounds like it sounds like you're trying to go into a topic. So before hey, you do, we gotta explain the rules to everybody for people who first jumped on. All right, this is Tudor Body Podcast. We break down trending topics and fights and MMA and well, I guess what's the word? Combat sports. Combat Twitter sports. Topics and combat go. sports. And the way we break it down, we break it down like a heavyweight fight. We give you three rounds. And it looks like round one. I, I mean, you, you already you already jumping into it. So round one, one way. Tell us what we got for round one. First of all, I don't want it to go unnoticed that the diplomat's hat. You know what I'm saying? My heart goes out to that ear right there. That's the fresh ass hat. I really like that shit. I just realized it oh. <laughs> just now. In real time, I was just like, wait a minute, that's well, I've seen this eagle before. <laughs> this, this is not the eagle that was on Ghostface's arm. This is no, no it's <laughs> Which, not that. <laughs> but it's, not. it's it's still one of the greatest hip hop eagles of all time. But no, that's like the second one. That's the second or third one. Yeah, man. So, I so, remember in the special delivery remix, it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> boy, 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 <laughs> get get smacked, silly, get, get smacked, smacked, silly, get smacked, silly. But and I was speak, born ready. Speaking of get smacked, silly, man, oh man, oh man, it has happened. One of the hype jobs has been beat. That matter of fact, let me not call him a hype job. Someone who has hyped himself up has finally been beat. And I am talking about none other than Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez, after winning all of his belts from Vasily Lomachenko, he went on this uh, diatribe about being undisputed and all that good stuff and avoiding uh, possible fights with other fighters to the point where he ended up having to fight his mandatory challenger, which was this Aussie name. George Cambosos and George Cambosos, even after this fight has been pushed back or changed five times, came ready to fight from the opening bell to the closing bell. He put on a show. As a matter of fact, they put on a show together, but I would say George Cambosos really put on a show because the 13 to 1 underdog beat someone that was not supposed to be beat at this point in his career. Mark, what do you think about this loss that Tiafimo Lopez is took? Listen, I don't think I can give a biased reaction to this because I like Vasily Lomachenko, and I kind of felt like Vasily just waited too long. Vasily would have beat that dude had he just started fighting earlier. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. I do I do remember the scorecards being a little, eh, nah, nah. Like I said, I was okay with Tia Fima winning, but like one of them, one of them judges was like made it seem like Tia Fima just beat that kid's ass. I mean, and that ain't the fight I saw after the seventh. That ain't the fight I saw at all. Well, you know, uh, judging is one of those fickle things in boxing. I mean, even boxers that judge themselves in fights. I mean, Tia Fima got his ass whooped so bad he claimed at the end of the fight that he won that shit eleven to two. So Bro, you, you, don't, you don't fight 13 rounds in professional boxing no more. Yeah, There's no way in the LeVar Thomas, LeVar Thomas never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Never lost. Basically, that's what he said. Basically, yeah, y'all know I beat that book. He was sounding just like Adrian Broner. Everything that people hate about Adrian Broner, Tiafimo is doing that. Brrr, just did that, that, that whole thing. Hey, man, I, I can tell you exactly what happened to that boy. Some overhand rights. Okay. <laughs> Some overhand so, rights from George Cambosa. Some check. So he didn't ask was that bad. Hey, man, he actually did. He actually did get beat up. Like, you go back and look at the entire boxing match, and then one thing that I like to look, look at and think about, who would I rather be when this fight is over? 
I looked at Tiafimo's face. I would much rather have been George Cambosos after this fight, man. Tio just didn't put that kind of work in. He didn't have that same kind of hunger. He didn't have a game plan. He went in there to knock Cambosos out in the first round, and it didn't come to fruition. Cambosos was still there, and he was still punching back. Just hit different, man. Just hit different. Okay. Hey, man. Well, well, that's unfortunate, man. That's unfortunate. It is. I, it is. Honestly, I didn't think Teofimo was going to hold on to that title long. Something about his face just didn't look like a face of that was going to keep seeing for a long extended period of time. I just looked at him like, you're going to get knocked out next fight, aren't you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like hey, he won of them. He won of them. I mean, I'm just saying, like, he just he just didn't convince me when I saw him. I was like, hmm. Not taking anything away from his skill. Maybe I'm just, it's just my biasness, and maybe I'm just a big old hater face. I was super enthralled by the Matrix, and I was just like, nah, that yeah. shouldn't happen. Yeah. See, I was okay. I'm okay with the Matrix going up there and getting knocked out by uh, Tank Davis. Okay, that makes sense. I'm okay with the Matrix getting destroyed by Earl Spence. Okay. Or getting somehow out-athleticized or outclassed by Terrence Crawford. Okay. But Teofimo? Yeah, it just wasn't his time, man. It just wasn't his time. <sighs> And to your point, in that fight, Vasily Lomacheco just turned that shit on around when he wanted uh, to. One or two times too late. One or two yeah. rounds too late. He yeah, started. And honestly, I think he realized that. Look, I think I think what it was was fear. I think he might have got caught in the early rounds, and he just feared getting knocked out. Yeah. Um, because he probably hasn't fought. I don't think he's fought an accurate, as accurate power puncher as Tiafimo to this point. So I think he got tagged. He didn't like the feeling of it, but then I think. Come around the seventh, I think his corner was like, "Hey, you're losing the fight." And he was like, "Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which reminds me of what we're gonna talk about later on in this podcast because there's a corner moment in that that was, wow, wow, that was legendary in that one as well. Yeah, but, but yeah, that, that's basically what happened with uh, Lomachenko and Teofimo. Uh, Lomachenko is a is an avid slow starter, and this time he just didn't start at all until it was too late and by that time this man's up on the point he's he's up on scorecards and in that fight between uh Vasily Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez Teofimo Lopez just didn't get hurt by Lomachenko that's why he was able to stay there that's why he was able to win that fight because he does have a nice chin George Camboso just said just showed you this time that you know not only do I have a nice chin as well but I have these boxing skills that can get you up out of here, too. You know mm. what I'm saying? We can embarrass you. So I don't know what's next for TFMO. Maybe a move up and wait to 140. Uh, it's unfortunate that he didn't uh, be, he wasn't able to accomplish what he said he wanted to accomplish or what he thought he had already accomplished at 135. But it'll be good to see him move up. And hopefully he chooses a smart fight because if he loses again the way he just did, it's going to be a long road ahead to make that money again. By a long road ahead, what do you mean? Ah, uh, man, uh, he's going to have to go the um, the loser bracket route. Ooh. And going the loser bracket route, it's not a lot of money in the loser bracket route. You want to keep keep your fights in the winner's bracket. So if I he lose again to a Cambosos or he picks someone like uh, a Javante Davis or Devin Haney, he loses to somebody like that next. It's gonna be a little harder to back up back, uh, to come off, you know what I'm saying? Like Rocky didn't take all them fights in a row. Some of them shits had to be tune-ups. You can't go from yeah. Apollo yeah. Creed. I think the whole the first <laughs> half of the Rocky up. Three movie. Yeah. The whole first half of the Rocky Three movie you know was beating, man? Up, beating up bums. Yeah, man. Like Rocky needed them tune-ups, baby. Yeah, he's gonna have to do something. I don't something. know. Uh this is he's a sign I don't know if you ever played, but they made a uh, a, a Rocky Balboa video game. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I saw if you that. Played a story, if you play the story before you fight Club of Lang, it's like literally a whole bunch of bums. Like you're just like walking through them. Hey, man. Like, word. word word on the street is it's it's fan art slash uh fan want. They want uh Club of Lang to have a son or at least someone he training named well that looks like Deontay Wilder for the next Rocky film, or for the uh, next Creed film. Well, I mean they're gonna do something, and it makes sense. Um. Yeah. Mike, this is gonna be the one Michael B. Jordan directs. So it's yeah. like, so I know Ryan Kruger directed the first one. Um, surprisingly, uh, Sylvester Stallone didn't ruin the second one. I mean, it's Rocky. He's not gonna ruin Rocky. I mean, the earliest onset parts of Rocky is not gonna ruin. Like, you know, maybe Rocky Five. 
But you know, give it time. One of the best no, spinoffs he... of all time. Huh? One of the best spinoffs of all time. No, honestly. And um, shouts out to those guys for being able to carry that series. Carry that series even further because they could yeah, really yeah, mess it up. Yeah. Like after yeah. the first one, they really could have messed it up. Like, I wanted to hate the second one. That's how I know the second one was a good one because I wanted to hate it because I knew Ryan Kukuli didn't do it. And I just expected Rocky to do some sort of Balboa. You remember Balboa when he fought? Yeah, uh, yeah I do. I do remember. I do remember those iterations, but I knew it was going to be straight because like they allowed it to write itself. They allowed it to write itself because you could see at the end of the first movie. Oh, OK. He's going to have a wife who is losing her hearing. We're going to be worried or not if his child has the same condition as his wife. Oh, he's a new champion in this. He's got something else to fight for. He's due a loss because it's a Rocky fan. He needs something to bounce back from. You know, it's it, it writes itself. It writes itself. And they're just letting it go. They're not doing too much, man. So they brought in Ivan Drago uh, and his son. I, at this point, why not? Marvel I thought Universe, that was really good. Yeah, I Marvel, honestly thought that was really good. It, it was, man. Marvel did something that is amazing for all films. When they created the whole universe thing, it let all films be able to say, you know what? You're around that same time. You know what? We can match that up together. Because who knew that the great, respectable Apollo Creed was out here sleeping with prostitutes and having babies? Is that what she, she was? She was a prostitute? Yeah, because he had his wife, and his wife didn't know he had a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, Adonis Creed mama was a woman of the night, or at least a mistress. I think you know she was a mistress. I don't know if she was a woman of the night. Hey man, women of the night can be mistress too, man. You stop hating, bro. You need to you need to start, you know, saying being inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you done with your round, sir? I'm done, I'm done with that round, man. Okay. Shout out, shout out to George Cambosos, man. You got a new fan in me, man. Star is born. <laughs> Star is born. Star is born. All right. So kicking off into the next round, we're gonna talk some MMA. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that. So roughly what two two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago? About, about um, two. Two weeks ago, Max Holloway um defended his number one contendency, his number one spot against Pedro Munoz. I, I, I forgot his name for a second. I guess Pedro Munoz. Now this fight, this bout in and of itself was a good one because Pedro Munoz is one of those explosive, explosive fighters. He throws a lot of weird kicks. He throws a lot of just, he just throws a lot of fantastic stuff. And he seems to have a pretty decent cardio, um, pretty decent cardio. And he was able to, con- uh, he can kind of continue to do that in later rounds. He's had a couple highlight finishes. So it definitely was set to be a exciting matchup to say the least. Now, when looking at it, and looking at Max, now I think like if you're like any other Max fan, like like myself, you just automatically just assume Max is just going to figure a way out of that. And you know, there's been moments where that hasn't been the case, and we're and you know, part of me was wondering with this would this be one of those moments? When watching this, you see a Max to Holloway that's a tad bit different. Now, one of the things I've noticed with Max Holloway is that you know, ever since he stopped sparring, he seems to have taken his skill level seems to another level um a whole nother level um and i think it's more so just uh it might be just more so a mental thing it seems like it's more of a a free-flowing thing like it seems like max just really trusts himself in there and he's just letting things happen now of course by saying this max holloway did win the fight um he outlasted pedro munoz um in the later rounds it was more so him just I believe he, I, I, I believe if I'm trying to remember, he just more so just outlasted Pedro and Pedro necessarily couldn't continue. One of the things about Max Holloway is that he has a granite chin. Well, yeah, he has a granite chin because uh, Poirier never knocked him out. So, but I think Poirier was just putting too much on it. And I think you can physically see him like not being able to move forward. He's a bigger but guy. With this win, we have to, of course, induct. Number one, we have to do one thing. We have to induct Max Holloway into the zombie club because he's definitely a zombie fighter, right? When we're talking about zombie fighters, you're talking about the Diaz brothers. You're talking about, I think, just the Diaz brothers for now. I can't really think of any. Do you know? Do you think of any other MMA zombie fighters that just keep moving? The Korean zombie, uh, Clay Guida, 
Oh, Clay Guidi, Korean Zombie. Uh, those type guys right there, guys who uh who who use their their faces to block a lot of punches. <laughs> yeah. Max Holloway is considered. I has to be part of the zombie club, Definitely. which did leads me to my next point. Which is next point is what is next for Max Holloway? Now, the reason why the zombie club membership leads me to my what's next for Max Holloway? Well, first and foremost, with Holloway beating Yair. Oh, uh, is it Yair Pedro Munoz? Hold on, let me just... It was, it's Yair Rodriguez. It's Yair Rodriguez. Scratch Yair. that. So it's not Pedro Munoz, it's Yair Rodriguez. So with Max beating Yair, that s- cements him as the number one um, contender in that division, which means that, of course, there is Alexander Volkanovsky for Max to oh, yeah. contend with. Now, Alexander Volkanovsky has looked extremely well against, of course, what's the, what's the fellow's name? Everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much against everybody. Um, I didn't realize that Alexander oh. Volkanovski has beaten all of them. everybody. Like, yeah. because I was such a hard Max fan, it wasn't until he fought um, Brian Ortega recently that I they were showing the highlights of who he beat. And I was like, wait a minute, he fought all these dudes? Oh, yes. he don't fought everybody. Man, I and, mean, for at that at, to that point, the last two losses that um, Max Holloway has suffered has been. At Alexander Volkanovsky's hand. So that just says that Alexander Volkanovsky did well enough to make both fights debatable, which is hard to do. Now, with Absolutely. this, um, with our with Max Holloway being inducted into the zombie club, we see that obviously, if you were to watch the fight, Max took a lot of shots to the face. Um, his uh rope dope, his uh granite chin rope dope definitely was put to use in this fight. Well. A lot of fighters have been weighing in, which are interesting because apparently these fighters could be potential contenders for Max. One being Alexander Volkanovsky. Alexander Volkanovsky, of course, gave him his proper praise. Obviously, the Yair Rodriguez fight was a war in and of itself. Max Holloway just kind of just outlasted him, kind of classed him a little bit as well towards the end. But it was definitely a hard fight. Both fighters definitely suffered a little bit of damage amongst each other. But because of how entertaining the fight was, because of what's going on, um, you get, of course, oh, uh, you get, of course, a lot of critiques that, hey, Max can't continue to take all this punishment to the chin. That's the first one right. that people are saying. Like, when Max Holloway's chin is gone, he's gone. Which, that's true. But I think I Max mean, Holloway would probably be smart enough to understand, hey, I can't just hang this bad boy out here like I yeah. used to. Like, I think he'd probably switch that up in his game plan but as for now alexander volkanovsky is definitely commenting and he's made some comments in regards to how he feels he's better max holloway of course acknowledge max holloway kind of sort of like a legend but he's better because of some of the elements in his game he doesn't just stand there he picks yeah. and pops and does x y and z so on and so forth we do know alexander volkanovsky does come from that city kickboxing his, at least for his striking comes from out of that city kickboxing gym that it boasts the likes of dan hooker it is real at asanye kai Kara, france yeah they, they just you know say and and new george cambosos <laughs> no, and, new, <laughs> and, George, and george, george cambosos, cambosos. Hey, he's gonna toss him in there. Yeah, yeah he went to City Kickboxing. Yeah, he, he over there too. George Kambosa. Yeah, I mean, hey, he's he'll awesome, star, baby. So he might have. He might have found his way over there. He's star, anyways, baby. Yes. He everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, with that being said, yes. But another, so a lot is to be said about Alexander Volkanovsky's striking prowess. I mean, these individuals essentially have created more so added the faint or like really yeah. faint in your the fainting in your striking to the game. A lot of other. Uh, High school strikers are starting to do it now. I mean, that little rise knee that uh, Adesanya does where he fakes the knee and then he comes with, with the right cross is definitely, or left, I think. Left, right, right, right. Left, that's I think. Right right knee and left hand. Yeah, right knee, left hand. So right knee, left hand. Um, that's definitely the weapon that is, um, always, um, honestly, almost always works when Adesanya throws it. It's yeah, actually man. interesting. But, um. So, I mean, I, all this is said to say that, you know, Alexander is probably a good judge of necessarily striking acumen and, you know, making certain critiques. So we already know that fight is up for grabs, and we already know that's going to happen. Some say Max Holloway won that second fight, so definitely it's a fight. There's definitely cause for another rematch, essentially. Now, another person has weighed in on this topic, and that person would be 
the notorious Conor McGregor. Before the fight, there's a clip of Conor McGregor. I'll send it to you, Renzo. You can probably put it in here. There's a clip of Conor McGregor walking back and forth, watching uh, Bruce Buffer announce Max Holloway. And it's basically him in his, him with his shirt off. Look at Buffer's hell, by the way. You know, Buffer, I mean, obviously he's he's definitely added a lot of weights training yeah. to whatever he got going on, which probably will fare him just, terribly when he, he comes just, back. But whatever. He's he just big right now. He just, yeah. He just, yeah he just super big, big right now. Super big. Yeah. Walking with his shirt off, flexing his muscles, yeah. walking back and forth, looking at the TV, essentially. Which is to essentially say, and of course there's been some other Twitter back and forth, it seems to say that it looks like Conor McGregor is possibly looking for a fight, a rematch with Max Holloway. Now, the issue with that is when, what weight is that going to happen? Are you going to make Conor cut? Probably no, not. No, you're going to go to 155. But he's over here at 170 now. Conor's uh, at 170 now. Well, well it, ain't, it ain't 160 catch weight, maybe? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't it ain't going to be 145 where Max uh, should be. But it's definitely going to be something. Yeah, it's something more toward Conor. Uh, that's gonna be Probably 155. 155. Probably 155, like yeah. you said. But that's the fight. Now, we all know that's a money fight. We all know Connor is instant money fight. And Connor has a litany of matchups that he can actually do. Reason being because Connor is still a superstar. And contrary to popular belief, Connor is still pretty good. He's not best in the world good. He's not number one contender good, but he's still pretty good. And because of that, you're going to see Connor fight somebody and you're going to see Connor fight a lot of somebodies yeah, I mean, like i mean if he loses to max he can go fight jorge masvidal he can go fight whoever he just has to have a decent showing and that's what we have so with that being said it is a true conundrum to what max holloway is going to do obviously the alexander volkanovsky fight is there of course there is the um there's you know of course there's the Connor fight i mean if max were to somehow be alexander volkanovsky and get the belt i mean you can do a situation where you have Connor try to make weight and win the belt. It will happen. Dana will do it. We'll yeah. all watch it. Yeah. Max yeah. is going to make pay-per-view money. So I kind of want it to happen, right? Cause he's going to be a champion again. There's a litany of matches. I know Connor doesn't really want to fight Alexander Volkanovsky. So we're not going to see that. Um, but there you go. That's what we got. And that, I mean, I mean, let me ask you. I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm in the round. What do you think Max should do? Oh man, I think Max should uh, accept whatever fight is presented to him. At this point, um, there are so many names out there that he could choose from. Hey, I would put him in there with Brian Ortega. I mean, it's a weight class. If I'm not mistaken, so the, uh, it's a weight class above at this point. No, they're same weight class. Same weight class. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Yeah, I put him in there with Brian Ortega. It's it's just so many different. After watching this man beat Yair Rodriguez and seeing that he's lost to Volkanovski twice, unless he fights Volkanovski again, I mean, whoever they put in there with him, do you want to try to make somebody a star or do you want to give him an opportunity to just make some money? It's up to you, uh, UFC, what you do with uh, Max Holloway at this point. But he's definitely blessed. Definitely blessed. Definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting the position that he's in. Um, you know, to be undefeated except for one is interesting. And it's interesting to see that. But, hey, I'm definitely interested to see what he ends up deciding to do and what the UFC ends up deciding to do. With that being said, I'm going to end that round. What we have for the next one, Lenza? And the last one, you know what I'm saying, it's bittersweet, but it's sweet nonetheless. We'll just focus on that part. But we had, a, um, since last we spoke, we had a, another big fight in the welterweight division of boxing with Terrence uh, Crawford fighting Sean Porter. And after the fight, Sean Porter retired. The reason why that is significant is because Sean Porter lost through a 10-round technical decision, and that's because his dad threw in the tile. That's significant because this was a fight that was going to be one of those common opponent-type fights between Terrence Crawford and Errol Smith Jr. Errol Smith Jr. didn't stop. Sean Porter, 
what Terrence Crawford did. Now the boxing fans are really talking. What do you look forward to see if this fight happens? What? How do you see it playing out? Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. I think that Earl. So you're looking at two very good fighters. You're looking at two very very good <clears throat> fighters. So. To honestly, it's more so about preference. Whoever says who's going to win, whoever style that you like the more, whichever one you like more, whichever one you're a fan of, that's the one that you're going to go for. What I'll say is that because I do like Terrence Crawford's style a little bit more, I do feel that Terrence Crawford is probably going to... I. I, I'm trying to figure out a way to say it without being disrespectful because I definitely respect Errol Spence's talent. But I feel like Terrence Crawford is really good. Yeah. Like, I think he's really, really good. Like, he's very smooth. And I think that, like, ultimate confidence that he has in himself really just carries him to the next level. Like, I think that chip on the shoulder for being from uh, Kansas – is it Kansas, right? Nebraska. Oh, oh. from Omaha, no, Nebraska. Nebraska. You one of them. You, oh, you the, the illest nigga in Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. So, they, hate, they hate that, by the way. So the fact that he's from Nebraska, of all things, Omaha, Nebraska, of all things, I think he just has the ultimate, 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 ultimate chip on his shoulder. And I think it just forces him to propel himself. And I don't know, man, he'd be taking these fights. But you got to think about it. A kid from Omaha, Nebraska knocked out America. Did he knock out America? Or did he yeah. just beat the mess out of America? He knocked out America. Knocked out America. Hey, well, well, well. The fight, the fight was stopped. Um, he was beating America up, and uh, there was a low blow. America took about, I say, two or three minutes. But after that, two or three minutes, he didn't. He didn't come back out. His corner was like, "Nah, nah, you had enough, man. It's only gonna get worse from here. We're going. It's going down here real fast." going down here real fast yeah so i mean just looking at terrence Crawford, he's just done way more than any i mean like he's a kid from omaha nebraska like i just think that 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 chip on his shoulder just propels him so much more and everything he does from being on joe rogan podcast to like to fighting to everything you can just see that chip there and he's just like <laughs> yeah, it's, very, it's very matter of fact it's very matter of fact Oh, um, one thing that you said remind well it made me think of something else as far as the styles and things are concerned. I've seen Terrence Crawford do more in the ring because he does more in the ring. I've seen Earl Spence do less in the ring only because he chooses to fight fighters how they fight. <clears throat> and that'll be and that, that is gonna be the most interesting part of this fight. How is Earl Spence going to fight this guy? Like, is he going to use the original Earl Spence style? Or is he going to use that, I'm Earl Spence, I'm better than everyone style, that I'm going to fight the way you fight to show you that I'm better than you? The way he fought Mikey Garcia was different than the way he fought Sean Porter, was different than the way he fought uh, Leonard Bundu. Like, he takes your best weapon and turns it into his best weapon, then nullifies your shit. It's an amazing thing. And to be able to do that with someone that switches like Terrence Crawford, oh, bro, it's going to be a slobber knocker, as old JR would say. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I mean, days. it's going to be a real good fight, even if it's a one-sided fight on either other side. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight because it's going to be a masterpiece. Yeah. If it's one-sided, it's going to be a masterpiece because I think both of their talents is going to take a masterpiece to do yeah. that, too. And even if That's- it's one of these quick fights, uh, a quick fight like uh, Hagler Hearns, like mm. you can give me about five, six rounds and y'all just punching. Hey, I hey, yeah, get that out. I, I don't need 12 rounds of it. You don't need 12 <laughs> rounds of it for your health. You know what I'm saying? So the reason why the, them MMA fights last so uh I mean uh go so quickly. You know I'm saying you get hit, then you then you stop. <laughs> the referee helps you stop. So hopefully we get one of those in. Speaking of which, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and we might have to cover this on the next podcast. So I'm going to send you some uh, videos of this. But uh, Frank Mir and a couple of other MMA guys did this. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. Hey, man. Hey, look. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it. Bro, I watched Frank Mir almost die. Frank Mir almost died, bro. The way Frank Mir got rocked, it looked like it was a glitch. 
I just don't understand why Frank Mir thought he could buy. Like he he has good MMA hands, it's, but that's the thing. It's not that he thought he could box. He just kept thinking he was Frank Mir. Oh, oh. you know what I'm saying? Like he it's went out those. there. Frank Mir went out there. He thought he was actually gonna be able to beat this man named Kubert Pula. Kubert Pula the other day was just fighting for a heavyweight championship belt. Man, when the last time you fought? For the highest level of championship in your sport, Frank Mir. You did it to yourself, cuz. You did it to yourself. Shannon, Shannon Briggs told y'all y'all MMA dudes gonna get your ass whooped. Now, not everybody got their ass whooped, but that right there was the most notable one. Like, bro, I just saw Kubat Pulev fight Anthony Joshua. Okay. That's not Frank Mir at all. <laughs> no, that's not. You know what I'm saying? Frank Mir probably no. can't beat one. Can't can't beat Tyson Fury, little brother. Oh, or cousin. What'd you say? Oh, I said or cousin. He probably can't beat Tyson Fury, little brother, or cousin. Probably not. He probably, probably can't beat. He probably can't beat Jake Paul. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing that out there. It, nah. <laughs> he probably can't beat Jake Paul. So the fact probably that, not. Hey, but he got a check. He went in there. That was great. Shannon Briggs and um and Rampage Jackson. They put on a great show. Uh, Shannon Briggs tried to do a takedown on Rampage Jackson, and Rampage Jackson stuffed it. And then, <laughs> then Shannon Briggs started started coming, please. Like, all right, back up now, back up, back up. <laughs> when he because re- he feel like, oh, oh, he's strong, strong too. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, back up, man, back up, man. That's it, it was beautiful, it was beautiful, but uh, yeah, that's okay. all that's all beside the point. But back to real boxing. Uh, the Terrell, the the Terrence Crawford Earl Spence fight would be one of the best fights of this generation, and hopefully, 2022 is uh the year is gonna happen. When this year, when the pandemic started, boxing suffered worse than any other sport. Period. So we just got back into the groove with these guys circling around each other, being forced to get some of these fights, and now. Now we seem to be in a very good position, or we could just be lying to ourselves. We've been in the same position we was the other day. One of the fighters that I don't like for real just lost, and I'm just riding a high off of that shit. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Basically. Who knows? Basically. Who knows what's next, man? Who knows? But Devin Haney fights Saturday, and uh, if he wins and keeps his WBC title, then there's an the opportunity for him to fight George Cambosos for undisputed at 135 pounds, which would give us someone that was just undisputed at 168, uh, Terrence Crawford, who was just undisputed at uh, 140 a little while ago. We have Josh Taylor, who is undisputed at 140 right now. And then we have an undisputed 135-pound champion, man. Look, fights are getting made. No matter how they how we slice it up, they're getting made. Some some movement is done. And shout out to Ron Garcia for not being the first one of them young dudes to lose. I know he's happy about that shit. Shouts out to Ryan Garcia, man. Yeah, I know he's happy about that shit, boy. He he was now he's been pulling out of fights like, yeah, I'm not even gonna finish the rest of that joke. But he's been pulling out of fights like a mug. I'm happy to see he was not the first one to take an L. Yeah, man. Maybe he'll stop pulling out of fights. Hey man, maybe, man. He maybe. Maybe he'll fight Tiafimo now. That's a fight. Tiafimo Ryan Garcia for 135 yeah. pounds. Internet It'll supremacy. be a shame to see uh, Tia Fimo get his ass with by Ryan Garcia. If he loses yeah. Ryan Garcia, he but like I said, he loses Ryan, he loses next one. <laughs> he loses next one. Yo, it's a wrap for that money. You can keep boxing, but it's a wrap for that money. You ain't gonna be getting to the money no more, bro. He, you know, till the takeover breaks over. God MC him, Cambosis. <laughs> <laughs> he he ready. <laughs> All right. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap it. Ding, ding, ding. That's three rounds. Yeah, baby. Guys, I appreciate you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing, and jumping on the podcast. We appreciate you guys sharing your support of the podcast. We're going to play around with some things, maybe see if we can post a podcast in different mediums to see how you guys react to it. So definitely please jump on board. Let us know what you guys feel. Let us know if you're feeling the new medium that we're jumping, we're putting the podcast on. And yeah, guys. This is your boy Money Mark signing off for One Way Renzo. We appreciate you guys staying tuned and staying um, in tune to the podcast and the channel itself. Your boy Money Mark, One Way Renzo signing off. Peace. Peace.